The Seattle Police Department is about to launch a pilot program to test new body cameras. The decision follows calls for more transparency by the city's new police chief. The program begins next week. It's expected to last about six months. will only include about a dozen officers who are willing to participate. The department is already collecting a huge amount of video from dash cams and from other sources. Making that video available online has now become a top priority. The city is asking the public for help. Alan Schaffler is in Seattle with more on that story. Alan. Good evening, John. The Seattle police took an interesting step today. They held a hackathon. They invited members of the local tech community, computer programmers, and software engineers to come on into headquarters to swap ideas about how to handle the enormous amount of video, all that data that is generated by police body cameras, and that in this state, at least, is a matter of public record. And there is one man who's mostly responsible for all of this, and he tells us all he wanted to do was watch police video, a lot of police video. I never imagined that any of this would, you know, I just, I just wanted to watch video. A week ago, we knew him only as Police Video Requests, his Gmail handle, as he filed massive freedom of information requests for police video at agencies across Washington State. Right now, we're, we're overwhelmed with in-car video. Uh, we have 360 terabytes of in-car video data, uh, and we store that internally. Police video requests requested all of it, the data equivalent of 40,000 full-length DVD movies or 90 million songs on MP3 music files. But that anonymous requester is no longer anonymous. It's Timothy A. Clemens. He's a 24-year-old computer programmer who's already posted hundreds of police videos online. He says he wants as much information made public as is technologically possible and legally allowable. The big issue has been bias policing and use of force. So let's go create a log of every single use of force case. Uh, as, here's the video, here's the 911 call, the radio, the reports, everything. And now he's working with the police who made a social media connection. Well, I'm watching on Twitter, uh, eating my sandwich at my desk, and I said, well, I'll respond to him. The basic message, drop the request, come in and help solve the problem. And he responded with a program he wrote that automatically edits police video. The result shows what's happening, but it's obscured without details that might be a matter of privacy. Depending on different freedom of information laws in different states, it might not work for or be needed by all police departments. Makes everything less recognizable. Yeah, blurs the frames. Um... But you can still tell what happened. You have a really good idea if somebody's getting punched. In a case like that, a formal request could be made for the unedited video. Seattle PD has no cost estimate for broad use of such a program, but they say it would almost certainly be far less than doing the same thing manually. It's just one of Clemens' ideas for opening up the process, always balancing law enforcement needs and public rights. And police around the country will be weighing the same issues as more officers wear cameras. At VView in Seattle, one of two camera makers dominating the market, business is booming as people clamor for police accountability. Because of recent events, they're really understanding that body cams are out there now. And so they're demanding their police agencies go and get these. Meanwhile, Clemens has withdrawn all his video requests and continues his work with Seattle PD. He envisions a future of easy, public, online access to police video for everyone. The ultimate goal is that American police are going to handle every situation to the textbook, exactly how the best professionals on earth would handle it. Okay? And they'll be held to task by people watching the video. Yes. A work in progress where policing and transparency merge. Now, so far, we don't have reports of any concrete proposals that have come out of the hackathon today, uh, but participants tell us it was a great exchange of ideas. And other police departments in this area are handling things differently. Bremerton, for instance, a city to the west across Puget Sound, has put their police camera program completely on hold. They're just not using them. They're hoping that the state legislature will make some kind of tweak to the current freedom of information law that will make giving the public those huge amounts of video easier and cheaper.
John? Yeah, it's an interesting story. A very complicated situation, though, for the police departments. All right, Alan Schaffer, thank you.